Shane Dawson just dropped part two of The Mind of Jake Paul, and this one was titled The Dark Side of Jake Paul. And he was with uh, the lovely Katie Morton, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist here on YouTube. And when I was watching this video, I'm like, wait a second, a ton of people who watch this are gonna start trying to diagnose themselves or diagnosing other people around them as sociopaths. So we need to talk about that right now. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about helping you improve your mental health. That could be improving depression or anxiety or your relationships and things like that. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. I promise you that I am not a sociopath. But like people keep saying, like that's exactly what a sociopath would say. But anyways, first and foremost, uh, go check out Katie Morton's channel. I actually go check out her channel when I'm trying to learn a little bit more about different mental illnesses to do videos on my channels. She's very, very smart and educated, so go check her out. Her subscriber numbers are blowing up um, because of this. And I'm actually gonna make a second video right after this talking about it. But anyways, if you're watching this, Katie Morton, or anybody else watching this, I have been trying to collab with Katie Morton since I came on YouTube, because I love what she's doing. She lives in Southern California. I live in Las Vegas. Katie. Let's collab together. Let's spread a message of hope to anybody struggling with mental illness, girl. But anyways, maybe in the future, maybe when I get bigger. But yeah, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the dark side of Jake Paul. So I was live streaming this over on Twitch and I was taking down notes, all sorts of notes. I have like 15 billion video ideas, but as I was watching this, I was like, man, like a lot of people, I know a lot of people can relate to different symptoms and signs and you know, uh, a lot of people might spot them and others, so we need to talk about it. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. There's gonna be some spoilers. But um, Katie Morton starts describing all the traits of a sociopath. Feel for other people. Yeah. And we, we feel all day. Mm -hmm. I feel pissed off, I feel excited, mm -hmm. I feel disappointed, whatever. They don't have any of that. And in the DSM, this is what she had. I actually have like a little pocket guide, but it's just, uh, it's a diagnosable disorder as antisocial personality disorder, okay? Um, she mentioned that 15% of criminals in the prison system have antisocial personality disorder. So these are people um, who have impulsivity issues. The biggest one is a lack of emotions as well as manipulation. Uh, if you wanna learn more about it, I just made a video on the first video where I go through all the different signs of a sociopath. But like, as I'm watching this, you know, all, all sorts of thoughts were running through my head. And like, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm an addict and alcoholic in recovery. So when she was talking about how people are doing things only to meet their needs, and they're talking about how a YouTuber might you know, make an apology video just to get people on their side, or the YouTuber might do something nice for a fan or something like that, but it's just to get something in return. Like, if you've ever known an addict or addict or uh, an addict or alcoholic, a lot of them do that. Um, we call this self-seeking, where we're only doing things to get something in return, whether it's like physical, tangible things, or it's like attention, or affection, or love, or things like that. But I think it's important to separate, you know, uh, the signs and symptoms versus like an actual diagnosis. Like, mental health and mental illness are so complex, and it's one of the reasons I have this channel to increase awareness and decrease the stigma and all that stuff. Like, it's so complicated, and this DSM, it's, it's a framework, it's a guide to kind of work in. But as you start to learn more about different mental illnesses, you start to see all of this overlap, okay? You start to, like they talked about in uh, this, this video, they talked about how sociopaths and narcissists have similar traits. If you look at people with borderline personality disorder, you'll see a lot of sociopathic traits, right? But she touched on a point where she said, some people only might show some of the signs or symptoms, but you know, they really feel awful, they feel bad. Like if you know anybody with borderline personality disorder, that's them, you know what I mean? They manipulate people, they try to get what they want, they're trying to get love, affection, they, they don't have a sense of self, they don't have an identity, so they might mimic other people and things like that, but most people with borderline personality disorder, which is why I hate the stigma around that disorder, most of them feel awful, they feel terrible about the things that they do to other people. 
So like, I wanted to touch on that real quick because when we're talking about this, like you might know people who have signs and symptoms, but like, please, 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 like as somebody who's like, a mental health advocate, like don't go running around like saying, oh, there's a sociopath, there's a sociopath, you're a sociopath, because some people just might have those traits, right? So one thing that Shane touched on was sometimes he doesn't feel emotion, sometimes he doesn't cry, sometimes, you know, if, if he sees something sad, he doesn't. And I'm thinking about making a video about how society and social media is turning us into sociopaths. Like, that, that lack of emotion, that lack of empathy that, um, you know, we're talking about, like when Katie said, they'll like just move on from one subject to a next. Like, you gotta understand, we're living in this 24 hour news cycle where this is one of the reasons why more people have depression and anxiety than ever before, but we're constantly inundated with bad news, bad news, bad news, awful news. Like back in the day, 30 or 40 years ago, like it had to be a major crisis in the world or in your area for you to really hear about it. You know what I mean? Now we're seeing more and more and more and more and more everywhere we go. And eventually people start getting desensitized to it. So over on the Philip DeFranco uh, Red Rocket podcast, they were talking about getting kind of desensitized to it. And I could really relate to that. Does that make them sociopaths? Does that make me a sociopath? No, absolutely not. But it's something that I personally look and reflect on constantly. So those of you who are new to my channel, not only am I an addict and alcoholic in recovery, um, I've been clean for six years, but I also worked at a treatment center for three years, okay? In the last three years, I have had over 70 people die. Over 70 people die from overdoses and suicides, okay? There are so many times, there are so many times when I get this news and just no emotion right? Just none. You know what I mean? And it makes me question myself, like, what's happening to me? Am I just numb to this type of thing? But sometimes those emotions come back later. But I want you all to know, if you're watching this, like, don't judge yourself too harshly if you don't express the emotions that you think somebody should express. Our brains are so complex and constantly changing. And like, like some of us who have just been around like that kind of trauma so, so much and that tragedy, we get a little desensitized to it and it sucks, but you have to really be mindful of your situation and notice like, okay, I do feel things. I do feel for other people. Like Katie Moore uh, talked about how this old lady was walking across the street and she's like, ooh man, I hope you get across that street, girl. For instance, the other day I was in my car and I'm driving and there's this little old lady that started to get into the crosswalk and I was like, honey, you got like 12 seconds. You know what I mean? Like we have to spot those things in ourselves and say, oh, okay, I don't feel no emotion at all because it's important to just realize that, you know, we can't always judge ourselves for what we feel or what we don't feel. That's a huge part of mental health is we're constantly judging our emotions. So like they, they go on later to say is that Shane is an empath, you know, Shane feels a lot, but you know, his brain can point out the specific times when he didn't feel bad. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean that he has, uh, he's a sociopath. Now, like, on a certain day, you might have sociopathic tendencies or sociopathic traits. If you really wanna learn more about this, go watch my video. I'll try to link it up in the info card up here about my borderline personality disorder story. Okay, so just a real brief little recap of that. I've never been officially diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, but as I learned about it, I noticed a lot of those traits that I used to have. A lot of the symptoms of borderline personality disorder I had, but now I'm in a much better mental state. But for example, one of the symptoms of borderline personality disorder is black, black and white thinking. A ton, a ton of people have black and white thinking. That does not mean that they have borderline personality disorder. So, you know, like part of what I try to do on this channel is just to educate people. I know that Shane Dawson's new video, The Dark Side of Jake Paul with Katie Morton is gonna get millions upon millions upon millions of views. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping some of you came to this video and you're learning like, okay, don't run around telling everybody they're a sociopath. Don't think that you're a sociopath. If you need help, make sure you check out the description below. I have resources where you can talk to mental health professionals and things like that, all right? But don't go around diagnosing yourself. Like YouTube is a great place where we can educate people. Like when I do videos, about different disorders or diagnosing people and you know it's like I try not to diagnose anybody I try to explain I don't know this person I think Katie Morton did a very good job of saying she doesn't know Jake Paul so she's not gonna diagnose him without knowing him you know what I mean but like 
we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful about trying to self-diagnose or diagnose others. Like, I know a lot of people who get sober, you know, and they're like, oh, you're a drug addict, you're a drug addict, you're an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic, and I, I warn people all the time, I'm like, don't do that, you're gonna piss a lot of people off, all right? But anyways, this was a very interesting video, um, and also, make sure you're subscribed and ring the notification bell. Right after I upload this video, I'm gonna go to edit a next video, and the next video is gonna be about Shane realizing that he needs to go to therapy because he's a fixer. Because I can definitely relate to that and that might be something that you could relate to too. So I'm gonna make that right after this. All right, but let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, again, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell. And I wanna give a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You help me do this and spread a message of hope. If you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, there's a link right down below. All right, thanks so much for watching. Don't self-diagnose or diagnose others. And I'll see you next time.